Hello again! As usual, this is Becca going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow Win Online, and welcome back for another week discussing Linden's scripting language. Those of you who have been following these videos for a while have probably noticed this is not my usual pretty little loft that I do these videos in. This is actually a just a quick thing I put together for dealing with a Rezzer system I'm using for part of my sim upgrades. But it has a component that I'm going to use for beginning to discuss security systems. As promised before, the first part of security systems we're going to discuss is detection. And I came up with a method as part of setting up my Rezzer systems. I've actually been migrating over to an on-demand resing system. And one of the things I need to be able to do is clean up some of those spaces when they were not in use. So I had to come up with an easy to manage way of detecting whether or not there was an avatar present in a given space. So that's what I'm actually going to go over what I did with you all today. This is valuable for security because you can't really know what to do with an avatar unless you know that they're there and it involves several commands we can go over. Now, the one I'm going to show you, I will confess, is probably not the most efficient way possible to manage a given system, but it is a very easy way to manage things and very easy to manage in multiple locations. That's why it was particularly good for my purposes and why I think it might be a good starting point for the rest of you. So, first off, to sort of cut down on the what is she talking about factor? That open space over there, that is actually underneath the main floor in the sim. We're still quite a ways up in the sky. Uh, 3,800 meters. So we're just going to pull out the test box here. There we go. This will help us go over what's involved. You see, the test box is basically just a duplication of this box we're standing in. It was made just to work out and test things related to my black box Rezzer system. But we're going to use my Wishmaster HUD because it's got some pretty effects to get over there. Wormhole to camera. All right. So in here, we're going to have, if I can find it, there it is, added a moment ago, there it is. This is the Abbey Tracker, that tiny little thing that is your Mark 1 cube. It is currently at the minimum size SL will allow, 0 0.01 meters per side, or I should say per axis. It is phantom, and it is invisible if you don't have highlight invisible turned on. So basically, the only way anybody will ever find this is to be looking for it, or to be you know, looking at it with highlight invisible, or doing a search for it, or something of that nature. So let us debug is set to true. So every few moments we should get a notification that there is an avatar inside its scan radius. Now rather than go through and reconstruct this entirely from scratch, I'm just going to, as I normally would, this time I'm going to just go over how it functions. Anytime that I'm dealing with something I think is kind of complicated, they already have built, I do this sometimes. There are a lot of things in this that you won't necessarily need for anything you're doing. They're only necessary in for the purpose I use it for, but a lot of this will still work. So the most important part is down here the search, scan, search, and range options. What those are were just triggers to know if it is going to scan. If it is, 
then yip to do go ahead and do things. On res, you can see it automatically sets scan to true. Yep, that whole thing was it getting the little particle things that say that it's sending a message. It says, checking location. Actually, it's telling us everything here. Range scale. Checking location, located at and specific coordinates, and I am within range. The parts you really need to be concerned about are right here. Checking location and is within target range. Those are covered in range, which will calculate what range it searches in. We'll go over that last. And search. So the first part of search is list guests, and that equals a get agent list. Get agent list will actually, you can filter by things, but in this case it's agent list region. What that does is it gets a list of every single avatar in that particular sim space. Boom. Everybody. Automatically logged. This is just a variation of the for loops I've been showing you, the way I'm doing this here. I'm not using the standard for, which increments up to a specific number, because I want to be able to exit at a specific point. So it is well, x is less than get list length guests. You start with key who equals list to key guests. We've dealt with lists very rarely in here, but this is how you take a specific entry on the list up here, which is a list of every agent in the SAM or every avatar in the SAM. List to key means you are taking a specific item on that list, whatever X is, and asking for that value and treating it as a key. You can also do list to string, where you can treat it as text. So if you have a list of names, it can automatically do list to string, that number. Vector position. Position equals a vector, list to string, get object details, who object position. So in this case, what we are doing is we're taking list to string, as I said before, it's taking a specific item in the list and parsing it as a string. That first means we treat that as a vector. The command will pull it as a string, but we want a vector, so we tell LSL to cast that as a vector. There again, it just verified that I am here. I'll actually leave the room in a minute. You'll see it deal with that. Get object details. Who? We have the key who up here. And that was taken out of the list. So in this case, the list we're working with is the object details. This command will allow you to get all sorts of information on a given thing based on its key. So we're using the key who it was established up here. And we're asking for object position. So basically, that's what all we're getting here. We're filtering out every other piece of information that can possibly give us. Here's some of the debug feedback I've told you about. You have a debug flag up here marked true. Owner says checking location of key to name. This gets the name of the object the, whose key you put in. In this case, it's an avatar, so you get my actual name there. Located at, convert the string position. So here we go. Checking location of myself, located at, right there. Then this complicated little if query here. If the Z position is greater than or equal to range Z and is less than or equal to range Z2. That's where we have to get up into range, but it checks 
am I at the right altitude? In this case, I check that first because my sim has a lot of different layers. So checking, are you even on the correct level of the sim? That isolates many possibilities right there. It is the first thing that can be ruled out. Then it checks the X and the Y positions because it has to be yes to every single one of these. Because that double ampersand, it means and. This is true, and this is true, and this is true, all the way through. If they're all true, if debug owner say key to name who, again, we're converting my key to a name, is within the target range. Count is set to zero. What that is for is because I use this to eliminate temporarily created scenes uh, for building interiors. I'll show you what I mean at the very end of the video. That count just builds up in order to, to give a reasonable amount of time for people to be away before it self-deletes. It just confirmed my presence again. Let me go ahead and hop out of here. Let's see, where's my wormhole? Wormholes over here. Now it will detect that I am not in range. If it does not find anybody in range, it will eventually move to this. But here's one case where return statements will save a lot of processor time. If it finds that there is somebody in range, it stops scanning and it exits out. Now, if you're doing this for security, you want to check every single avatar, so you will not want to do that. You will not want to return there the way I do. That is only because in my case, for what I built this for, it is okay to delete something when there's nobody in it. But if there is somebody there, you only need one person there to keep it around. So you can exit, you can return out of this while function as soon as you found somebody. If not, it just increases the count. And if count is greater than or equal to four, it gives the command to eliminate its entire group. The whole group setup, that's part of my resing system. That's not important to security. Now, the other part to consider is how did I get the range? That is up here, this function for establishing range. Vector base is get object description. That is built in. It's, again, part of the resing system. The real calculation is what's important. Vector posit. Vector posit, or short for position, because position is an actual keyword, is get position. When it's setting up, if debug is set, the owner will say the range scale equals and then string base. Not a thing to worry about for here. If you're doing this as a static thing, you don't need to recheck this. So here's the other part that's relevant for you. Range, I have the most variables established globally right here. This means that they will be remembered for the entire script. If I kept them only, if I created them inside here, they would go away as soon as we exited range. We don't want that. We want to remember them. So they have to be set up outside of this function. Then we establish what they are. Range x1 equals posit, which is the position, minus base x2. I apologize. I was actually slightly wrong on whether or not this would be relevant to you. I was remembering how I put this together slightly differently. This is why comments sometimes help. I did not do them here, but it would have helped. Side note, we do the check. I am outside the target range. I am not inside that space. The base is actually the size the object is supposed to be because it starts as a box of a given size. This is how it becomes easy to establish. We'll go over that in a moment. So base dot x slash two. What that means is the base is established from the size, the sizing parameters in a vector from 
a starting object. I will show you why that's important in just a minute. But by dividing that by two, you get how far it is from the center point to one side of a box. So you want all the way to one side, you subtract that from the starting point, and then for the other one you add it to the starting point. That will give you points on the x-axis that tell you one side to the other. And you do the same thing for the y-axis and the same thing for the z-axis. Any vector, you can put in the name of the vector, dot, x, y, and z, and you'll be able to deal with just that position in the vector, the x, y, and the z. If you're dealing with a rotation, I believe the last one is s. So because remember, rotation has four points, not three. And the last one would be S. So that's how you get where's the top, where's the bottom, where's the front, where's the back, where's the left, where's the right. I will give you the demonstration of that in just a moment to make more sense. And that's why down here, these, if position Z is greater than or equal to Z1, well being less than or equal to Z2, that tells you is it between those two points. Now, in order to make this make a great deal of sense, you will need to understand what I do to create this is I make the space that I'm going to track, or in the case of a security system, the space you want to guard, I create a box. Let me set it to phantom so I don't displace my own avatar here. That would be embarrassing. And then I simply shape the box to fit the space I need to monitor. As I said, this is not likely the most efficient method of getting this. So now, when that script runs to get its information, it has its center point, which you see where those arrows intersect. And then you have its dimensions right here, size 23.24, blah, blah, blah. If you divide that to half, that's how far it is to get to either side. So by doing that mass, I get the actual distance from the center point. With that distance, I'm able to calculate the range base is the scale of this box right here. Starting from that center point, if you divide the base, which is the scale for the x-axis by 2, you have how far from the center point, plus or minus. So plus will get you to this side over here, minus will get you to this side over here, and you repeat that for front to back and top to bottom. That is an easy way to calculate the volume of space you need to monitor and it allows you to run one admittedly somewhat clustered if statement after you get the position of the avatar by monitoring its key. This doesn't involve a sensor. This pulls from, this accesses a database that SL maintains automatically by itself. It's already collecting that data. You're just accessing it. You're not having to run. Sensor sweeps are known to, to trigger a certain amount of lag. It has to go through and expand outward and check in this volume where is everything. The part where this isn't necessarily the most efficient, I'm not 100% sure whether or not comparing the position to this list is more efficient than a sensor. I'm not 100% sure. But this is easier to set up it is very easy to define the space you want to monitor. You simply create a box that size, run the comparison where base is could be replaced with get scale, your position, get position, and that will give you all of your coordinates for top, bottom, front, back, left, right. Then you just plug them into this little thing here with the list to key, 
guess, guess being established as a get agent list, agent list region. That'll give you a list of every avatar in your sim. Then one by one, you get their keys. Use that to get their position. Compare their position to your list. And you know whether they are where they should be or not. There are other things we can do to make security use of this more efficient, and we will go over more of those next week. But that is the easy way to establish an area for monitoring to determine if, you're, if an avatar is within the protected space. I tried a couple of other methods for doing that. None of the others were quite as simple as that was. Work quite as smoothly as that did. And in just a moment, this will auto delete. We already have three cases of target outside of range. So any moment, there it goes. It gave me all of the debug feedback I still have in there, and it automatically deleted itself. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you today is I promise to show you exactly what I'm using this for in the sim, even though we're only going through the how to detect an avatar is in a space. So I think a good place to demonstrate be the underground club I have. Actually, this will serve purposefully. To wonder what the whole system I was working on is for, if you look inside this space, there is nothing here. But there is, here we go, that door and this door I'm at are meant to be connected. So I sit on this and it automatically sends a signal to my reser management system, creates this space, which you see had been empty a moment ago. Since this is not a thing that you can see outside of using it, it doesn't have to be in the sim at all times. And those teleport doors just connect it. That enables me to make a much more efficient use of sim resources, only having stuff present when necessary. If people have enough interest, I will show how to construct a similar system. I'm also planning to put it on the market once I've given a little more stress testing here and made a video to show how to use it. So people who want the technology but don't necessarily want to go through the trouble of learning how to make it will have access to it. But I will also do videos if there's enough interest in the comment section on how to do those as well. Though first we're going to finish the discussion of security functions. So that concludes this week's video. Thank you again for coming by. Uh, please comment, like, or subscribe. It definitely lets me know that people are using this. There, it just went ahead and gave me a notice that I am not within its range there. So, there you go. These are all developer comments that just help me monitor its, its behavior on Sam. So, I will be removing them from a finished product. Although, I'll create a way to turn them on if people feel they have need. Um, so, again, as usual, good day, good luck, and happy coding.